Welcome to our lecture online and this, in this example we're going to talk about what we call terminal velocity. We have a person jumping out of an airplane and when the person reaches a speed of 10 meters per second pulls on the parachute and then we need to figure out what will be the final velocity of the person floating down in the air with the parachute considering that B which is a constant that relates the amount of drag resistance the parachute will have in the air to be estimated being 50 newton seconds squared per meter squared. So how do we do that? Well, let's start with the equation F equals ma. Forces involved here are the force of gravity, which is mg, minus the drag forces, which would be b times v squared. Notice that the drag forces are, are proportional to the velocity squared, and that equals m. Instead of writing the acceleration, we write dv dt because we want an equation that relates velocity to time. Turning the equation around, dividing both sides by m, we end up with dv dt is equal to mg divided by m is simply g minus b over m times v squared. All right, now we want to get rid of the b times m, so we're going to factor out a b over m, so we have dv dt is equal to b over m times the quantity g times m over b minus v squared, like that. And now to make things easier to work with, let's take g m over b and call that a constant. So we're going to let, let's write it down here, let k, the constant k, equals g m over b, just to make it easier. Notice when I multiply b over m here, I get g again, so that's still correct. So now we can write this as dv dt is equal to b over m times k minus v squared. And actually, probably what we want to do is we want to make this k squared. I want to make this k squared because we want the difference of squares because that's easier to factor, so let's write that. And then I want to turn these around, so I'm take the minus put in front, so we can write this as dv dt is equal to minus b over m times the quantity v squared minus k squared. Now we're ready to separate the variables by putting this over here and the t over there, so we can write this as dv divided by the quantity v squared minus k squared is equal to minus b over m times dt and now we're ready to integrate both sides of the equation because now what we've done is we've separated the variables and we can go ahead and integrate. Now this is a little tricky to integrate, so what we want to do there is write it as follows. So let's come up here. We can write this as the integral of dv, uh, dv divided by, and write this as v minus k times v plus k equals, we can already integrate the right side, so it would be minus b over m times the integral of dt is t plus a constant of integration, let's just write a c1, and that will be this, the constant of integration of the right side and the left side. Now here, what we want to do here is write it as follows. This can be written as 1 over 2k times the integral of 1 divided by v minus k minus 1 divided by v plus k times dv is equal to minus b over m t plus c1. You say, what in the world did he just do? How is that equal to that? Well, it turns out, let's go ahead and try that. Let's take this right here and write it as 1 over v minus k minus 1 over v plus k and simplify that. So we're going to write over a common denominator. So this can be written as v plus k minus v minus k over, and I have to put parentheses there, over v minus k times v plus k. And notice that this is equal to the v's cancel out, and this becomes 2k divided by v minus k times v plus k. Notice that. And then if I divide both sides by two, uh, 2k, I get this. So I can say that this, with the 2k taken away, is equal to this, but I have to account for the 2k. And so I, could sh I just showed you that this is a proper substitution for that right there. All right, continuing on. Now this is easy to integrate because this is dv over v minus k minus dv over v plus k. 
And so this can be written as one, one over two K times the natural log of V minus K minus the natural log of V plus K, like so, equals minus B over M times T plus C1. Combining that, this can be written as, oop, I don't need equal signs there, do I? Okay, I'm getting to while with my equal signs. So 1 over 2K times the natural log of, the rule says that if I subtract natural logs, I could write as V minus K over V plus K equals minus B over M times T plus C1. And let's see here. Hmm. I think I'm going to move the 2K to the other side. So let's get rid of that and put a 2K over here like that. And now I take the antelog of both sides. So I can write E to the natural log of V minus K over V plus K is equal to E to the minus 2KBT over M plus C1. Now, E to the plus C1, I can take that and put it in front as a constant right here, and this negates that, so I end up with V minus K over V plus K is equal to the constant times E to the minus 2KBT over M. All right, I'm almost there. I don't want V minus K divided by V plus K, I want V on the left side, so what I could do is I can go ahead and try to algebraically solve for V. So let's do that. So I end up with V minus K is equal to V plus K times C E to the minus 2 K B T over M. And now what I can do is I move the minus K over to the other side, becomes plus K. I multiply this times that and bring it over here. So I end up with V minus V times C e to the minus 2 K B T over M. So I, multi I took this and I take the V times this and move to the left side, which is equal to K times C e to the minus 2 K B T over M. And the minus K goes to the other side becomes a plus K. And so now factoring out a V here, factoring out a K, and moving the rest of the other side, this will then look as follows. And I could probably, no, I don't have enough room here, so let me bring it up here. So this can now be written as V is equal to, and factor out a K, so I have K times, and if I turn this around, I can write this as one plus C E to the minus two K B T over M divided by, when I factor out a V here, I have one minus that, so I have a one minus C e to the minus two K B T over M. And that becomes my final equation. Of course, now notice, I still have a constant of integration here. Let me put a parenthesis around that, which I don't know what that is equal to. So, let's see what happens. Remember that the velocity will decrease and eventually become a constant. So, when time becomes infinite, if t goes to infinity, then e to the negative infinity goes to zero, and this goes to zero, so those two terms go to zero. So what I can say here is, when t approaches infinity, e to the minus infinity goes to zero, and that means that v equals k. Okay, and also remember that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second when he opens up his parachute, so when t is equal to zero, v is equal to 10 meters per second. So based upon that, I should be able to figure out what, um, let's see, what c is equal to. Because what I can do here is when t is equal to zero, I end up with 10 is equal to k, times 1 plus c divided by 1 minus c. There we go. And that will allow me to solve for c because k, after all k, is equal to the square root of gm over b. So k is equal to the square root of gm over b. 
And of course, I need some value for m. Let's say, let's call m equals 80 kilograms. m is equal to 80 kilograms, so I need to have some mass for the person jumping with the parachute. So let's find out what k is equal to under those conditions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this portion right here because I need some more board space. So finding out what k is equal to, k is equal to the square root of g, which is 9.8, I can just might as well put 9.8 down, 9.8 times 80 kilograms, and b, we said b was equal to 50. All right, so that will give us a value for k. So 9.8 times 80 divided by 50, and take the square root of that, so that would be 3.96. So k is equal to 3.96. All right, so that goes in here, which means that 10 divided by k, so 10 divided by k times 10 equals, so that gives us 2.525 is equal to 1 plus c divided by 1 minus c. Okay, that I should be able to solve for c. So let's see, multiply across, so we get 2.525 minus 2.525c is equal to 1 plus c. And then coming up here, notice I can subtract this c from that c, so I end up with uh, minus 3.525c is equal to this minus that, so 1 minus 2.52, so that would be minus plus 1 equals that would be a minus 1.525. And finally, C is equal to, divide by 3.525 equals, so C is equal to, oh, that would be 0 0.433. All right, now I have a value for C, and I have a value for K. So I can take my equation that I have right here, replace the value for C, replace the value for K, and that will give me uh, a better equation. Now, of course, I'm running out of board space, but let me come over here and see what we get. So V is equal to, K is equal to 3.96, 3.96 times one plus, C is 0 0.433, 0 0.433, times e to the minus, now, 2 times k, and k is 3.96, so it would be minus uh, 7.92, minus 7.92, that would be 2 times k, times b, times t, so times b, which is 50, times t divided by 80, which is the mass of the person, all divided by 1 minus 0 0.433 e to the minus 7.92 times 50 times t divided by 80. And of course, we can simplify that even further, but I think the rest is just arithmetic. At that point, I have an equation that tells me the velocity as a function of time. And if I work this out, I'll have a simplified version of this equation. All right, quick review. I have a person jumping out of a parachute, mass of 80 kilograms, initial velocity of 10 meters per second, and the coefficient of resistance of the parachute flying through the air is 50 newton seconds squared per meter squared. Starting out with F equals ma, F is going to be the weight of the person minus the resistive force of the wind on the parachute equals m times dv dt. So now we can get an equation where we have velocity and time in the same equation, the only two variables. We separate the variables, we can integrate both sides, but one over v squared minus k squared, we have to separate the variables like this, have two fractions, we can integrate those, we get the natural log, we simplify, then we take the antilog of that, and then we have to again separate the variables, v on one side, k on the other side, so we can write it like this. Here we can solve for k, because we plug in the right values, 3.96, and we can solve for c, assuming that when t becomes infinite, v equals k, and then when we plug in the value for k, we can solve 
for t equals zero, we have initial velocity equal to 10 meters per second right there. We can solve for the constant integration constant c. And then we we'll plug that back in and plug in the correct values for all the other things that we know, g, m, and b. Then we come up with the equation that gives us velocity as a function of time. And in the end, the steady state or terminal velocity, when it is reached, the velocity will be equal to 3.96 meters per second. And that's how we do that.